Hello, hello, good afternoon and welcome to Hartbury College in the heart of Gloucestershire for this afternoon's Round 6 at Tyrrell Premier 15's game between Gloucester Hartbury and Saracens. Now, joining me to look ahead to this one is a lady who scored 44 tries in 58 games for England. Merchant! Cap Merchant is in for England! It's Women's Rugby World Cup winner Kat Merchant, former Worcester player. Kat, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. Yeah, glad to be here today. Good, good. Uh, what about this game then? A big, uh, a big top of the table clash between Gloucester, Harper and Saracens. Yeah, I think it's the first big game that we're going to see and it's going to be a really exciting game. I can't wait to look at it. It's really nice weather, nice big pitch, uh, both teams on form. It's going to be a great game. Yeah, it should be. Um, it's been a big week, of course, with Simon Middleton naming his EPS ahead of these three international games against Canada coming up in November. Um, what have you made of the squad? A few new faces, the likes of Ellie Kildoon and, and Zoe Harrison, who, who we will see today, of course. Yeah, well, it'll be nice to see those girls. Um, now they've been named they've got the confidence in Simon Middleton the coach and we'll see how it affects their game because most of the time with players when they've got this backing and the support we'll see better things from them so hopefully they won't see it as pressure they'll see it as an opportunity I can't wait to see them also in that squad obviously a really good mix of experience uh, with the likes of Danielle Waterman Tamara Taylor and and also to mix with the young ones so I think it's a great exciting squad yeah through three tests against Canada coming up of course you can catch the first one of those live streaming here on englandrugby.com and on the Facebook page uh, so let's Let's just have a look at the league table just to uh, give us an idea of where everybody sits after last week's rounds. Harlequins ladies, of course, going five from five at the top with all five bonus points. And Kat, that's how the table's looking. Um, and that, uh, well, second against third today is, is what's uh, wetting the appetite. Definitely, yeah, the first big game I think that we're going to see and it will really kind of set the bar for um, the top of the table because so far they've just played towards the bottom and so obviously lots of tries, things like that. But this will hopefully be a really tight encounter, but also exciting. And then at the bottom, we can see Worcester struggling a little bit there, still not able to get their first win. Waterloo then uh, just above them and the Sharks. It's, uh, it's proven to be a tough season for Worcester. Oh, yeah, Worcester, I mean, it's a complete, I was talking about it, it's almost like the entire first team left. Um, so you're trying to play a second team against, uh, with the exception of a few of the girls, obviously, but uh, really tough for them this year, that, yeah. Yeah, OK, well, uh, we've now got a chance to have a look back on the tries that were scored from last week in round five. Let's have a look at the try lights from the Tyrrells Premier 15s. So those are the tries from last week, and let's have a look at the result. Cat, an interesting one there between Waterloo and Darlington Moden Park. Nil, nil. Can you remember a game that's gone scoreless before? Uh, never, and I'm pretty <laughs> pleased to say I didn't watch that game. <laughs> yeah. That must be very frustrating for the players on that one. Indeed. Harlequins ladies then running out, as we said, five out of five for them against Bristol ladies, 49 points to 12. Uh, Richmond nil, Saracens women 29. So Saracens getting that win last week. Wasps 45, Loughborough Lightning 5, and Worcester Valkyries there nilled uh, by Gloucester Hartbury, 43 points to nil. Uh, so, so that really sets things up for round six, of course. Um, in terms of playing each other, the top three, well, up to now, they haven't really. But Gloucester Hartbury losing out to Bristol in round four, where Quinns beat Bristol last week at the Stoop, um, makes things a little bit more interesting. Um, Gloucester Hartbury have beaten the likes of Darlington, Moden Park, Sharks, as you can see, Wasps, Richmond, but have got that loss to Bristol. Uh, and if we have a look at the Saracens' at recent results, well, they've beaten the likes of Furwood, Waterloo, Loughborough, Worcester, 
and Wasps. So uh, this sort of top of the table clash, this second and third matchup is uh, is is going to be a really tasty one. Definitely, yeah. It's going to be uh, their toughest opposition to date, I think, for both the teams. So be a big game. Quinns, of course, at the top, who've beaten Wasps, Waterloo, Loughborough, and Darlington, Moden Park Sharks, in their time. So we can now have a look at the tries scored by both of these sides last week. And uh, we'll cap this one was a, a simple case of through the hands. Yeah, just a nice pick blind off of the scrum. Uh, Worcester winger is uh, dropping off for some reason, but then it's just simple fix and pass, get it out wide, really clinical from Gloucester there. And then another little show and go through the gap there. And that's nicely done. And that's where Ben Goddard and Kerry Large just link so well together. Like whether they're playing at 10 or 12, <clears throat> excuse me, whichever way round, they just link really well. And it's the first flavour we're getting of how Gloucester Hartbury like to play this through the backs. We've got sort of two teams that are interestingly matched up to each other here because Gloucester Hartbury like to run it through the backs. And, and as we'll see in a moment, Saracens are quite an upfront beast. Yeah, uh, Gloucester and Hartbury are clearly trying to get it wide. They're trying to stretch the defences. And then Saracens are just big, strong runners. And they just try and bosh their way over that line like a much tighter game. So here's our first look at, uh, at Saracens last week. And you can see here, straight from the back, and Poppy Cleal says, I'll have five points. Yeah, and I don't think many people can stop Poppy Cleal from five metres out. Poppy Cleal is, uh, is doing pretty well in terms of the, uh, the try count, as we'll see in a moment. There's another one. And uh, of, the, of the starting 15, well, Saracens have put down 18 tries up front compared to 12 out in the backs. And... Uh, quite conversely for Gloucester as we mentioned uh, out of uh, 15 of the starting 15 scores 11 have come from the backs and just five from the or four from the forwards sorry so uh, it's an interesting tale and uh, it'll be fascinating to see this afternoon how that works out yeah because Saracens do have pace out wide so if they wanted to get it out there they could but it's just obviously interesting that they've got those uh, big forwards that they can do so Marley Packer then leading the way, but of course Saracens without her today got a knock against Richmond last week, so she won't be featuring. And uh, well, there's Poppy Cleal with the five tries herself. Rachel Lund, who's been doing decent things in the centre for Gloucester Hartbury, she's actually not had tons of game time in doing that. She's uh, scored those tries in about uh, well a game and a half. Uh, but uh, you can see there Katie Mattinson at the bottom. She's uh, another one of those names that has appeared in the EPS this week. So those are the top try scorers in the Tyrrells at Premier 15s. So not long to go until kick-off, so a great chance to catch up with the two coaches of the sides today, starting, of course, with the home side, Gloucester Hartbury coach Susie Appleby. Well, Susie, plenty of excitement ahead of this one. How have things been going this week in preparation? Yeah, it's been, it's been a very good week. Uh, we made a few too many errors, on, as far as I'm concerned, uh, against Worcester, so we've had um, some, some detail to look at, um, but it's gone really well, and um, the girls are really up for, for today, really excited. I know that coaches say we just look at ourselves, but obviously with half an eye on Saracens coming into this one, you might be pleased that they're without their top try scorer in Marley Packer this week. Yeah, Mar Marley's an outstanding rugby player, you know, she's a threat all over the park um, and we obviously have prepped for her, her to be in the side. However, having said that, they've got really good players um, who, who are going to, you know, Sonic moves into her, her spot, Poppy's there, you know, they've got really good ball carries. We know their strength is, is their power through their forwards as well as a very good set of backs. So we, we've prepped for any eventuality really, but um, obviously it's always a bonus when Miles isn't on the field. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, are you, what are we expecting from Gloucester Hartbury this afternoon? What do you want to see from your side? Yeah, well... Our strength is very much. Um, um, we are. We have got some good ball carriers. However, we're, we're not. We're not the biggest, most powerful um, um, team. So we want to play smart. We want to have a couple of carries through our forwards, but then we want to use our our excellent um, back three. You know, Ellie Kildoon is is outstanding. She's come back from England Academy. She's been selected for the Autumn Internationals, and she's only 18 years old. You know, we've got um, Abby Burton playing number eight today who's 17 years old you know she's she's making massive progress so you know I just want to see them get out there and express themselves and that's been my message to them today. We're looking forward to that as well Susie best of luck. Thank you very much. Well Rob thanks for joining us uh, your team getting into the spirit of things behind you what are you hoping to see from your Saracen side? Um, just some more free-flowing rugby uh, you know being really clinical just trying to match our tempo with accuracy that's probably been a, a big goal this week so just more of the same. We're talking about the different strengths of the sides and, and Gloucester seem to score a lot of their tries out the back. You guys have certainly got some muscle up front. Are you going to be uh, relying on that again today? Um, hopefully a better balance, you know, and that will go in with our trying to match our 
uh, tempo and accuracy together, you know. But no, we've got some really talented young backs, and hopefully they're more of a, a threat today. Yes, absolutely. And the Tyrrells Premier 15s has been showing a, a great deal of quality, a lot of shop window for players. And, and it seems to be that the mix of, of international experience in these sides and, and perhaps some of the players that you guys have, have brought in recently is really working for the development of those younger players. Oh, definitely. I mean, the first thing we look to uh, to any player that we bring in is, is what their values are like and if they match with ours. And then obviously, you know, we bring in Marley and Poppy in, you know, their first job is obviously to perform. Their second job is to develop the youngsters around them. And, and that's a big ethos of the club. So, but you see that at, at all the Premiership clubs now. It's very exciting to see. Yeah, and, and what do you think we can we, we will see? What sort of game do you expect this afternoon? Um, lots of ball in play, um, lots of touches, offloads, continuity. Hopefully, it's very exciting for the neutral. Probably nerve-wracking for myself and Susie, <laughs> but um, just an exciting, fast-paced game. And the sun's out. I know, and it's wonderful facilities, isn't it? I've, I've never been here, but um, the facilities are great. So it's uh, we're really excited to be here, and we've got lots of young players that came to Hartbury to study so it's nice for them to come back as a Saracen and, and show them you know what they're all about. Best of luck. Thank you Nick, thank you. Hello, hello, good afternoon. I think I saw myself on camera there for a moment, that was uh, terribly frightening. Uh, so the scene is set then, hearing from both coaches and uh, well you can see uh, on your picture there the uh, guard of honour is uh, is ready to welcome the two teams. And uh, we can have a look at the lineups for each of the sides. Starting with Gloucester Hartbury. A smattering of international players in both lineups today. Uh, for, for Gloucester Hartbury, Kerry Large, Rugby World Cup winner in at fly half alongside uh, Bianca Blackburn at scrum half. Uh, Rachel Lund, top try scorer, as we mentioned. Up front, young Abby uh, Burton is, uh, is playing there at number eight. And uh, Irish exile Catherine Buggy there in the front row. Uh, doing her Masters, incidentally, and, uh, well, Ellie Kildoon at 15 in that EPS, and, well, plenty to look forward to. We'll actually hear from uh, from Sarah Hunter at half-time, who was talking about Ellie Kildoon this week, and uh, I think some comparisons have been made to a certain Emily Scarrett, so we look forward to seeing her. And for Saracens, well, the notable names, of course, the internationals, Captain Lottie Clatt on the wing, and then Georgie Gulliver and Poppy Cleal, some big names in there as well, and, uh, well, that experience alongside with some of the other names as well, the more experienced, Saracens campaigners Kat Evans the hooker but at the club for over eight years captain that Saracens Premiership Sevens team that won the title a couple of years ago uh, so that's how Saracens are lining up for this one and we can have a look at the replacements as well and that's how things are looking for both of the sides Lauren Cattell there with 20 caps number 21 for Saracens women and uh, well young Eloise Hayward just 18 years of age, number 20. Yorkshire girl will be the replacement scrum half. A couple of 18, 19 year olds on that bench. And, and there is a fair bit of youth in this Gloucester Hartbury side, isn't there, Kat, as Susie was saying? Definitely the back row at 17 years old. And imagine that, like playing in the Premiership at that age. It's incredible. And hopefully they'll just grow and grow each game with their confidence. And we'll see a lot of enthusiasm and work great from them. And you can see the wind blowing our flags around here as uh, the youngsters do desperately try and hold on to them. That, that, look, that poor little chap down to the right. I think he's a little bit chilly. Someone give him a cuddle and a hot chocolate. I think that's what we need. You're very welcome wherever you're tuning in to join us. I know that uh, people are watching on uh, Premier15s.com and, of course, on the Facebook page. Send us your tweets uh, to hashtag Premier15s uh, wherever you're watching. And, of course, we'll keep in touch with the messages coming in on the Facebook page. I know we've got, uh, well, Jamie Jones, as mentioned, on Facebook watching in Spain. Of course, they're watching the women's sevens team. And um, it is just it is just worth mentioning that you know uh, that sevens and 15 split uh, as we move forward in terms of the England outlook is allowing as you said earlier a lot more of these players to get to get more consistency knowing that they're building towards 15s representation with England rather than sort of jumping from one discipline to another yeah and it is so difficult going from sevens to 15 so I think it's a positive thing when it is split it gives more people an opportunity especially in the back line and back row to step up and uh, be viewed and get their chance Gloucester Hartbury, of course, are missing a fair few uh, players. They're missing a few internationals, about five Welsh players. The likes of Sean Williams, the Sevens captain, Hannah Jones, the centre, Fionn Lewis, Beth Lewis, under 18 Sevens captain. So Susie, uh, well, talking during the week, just saying that the challenge here is, is really to encourage some of those less experienced players to educate them to be more professional, and that that's where the blend of more experienced players can really help in terms of bringing the uh, younger players along creating that professional culture and, and up you know up, up until they get that experience at the top level 
they might not have experienced as to what that's like. Yeah, because I think um, it's a big step to step up to a uh, grown adult kind of rugby. So when you've come from under 19s and things like that, it is a huge difference. And some things you might have got away with, you won't get away with. So Saracens make their way out onto the field then. And here come the home side. Final words in the group, no doubt Poppy Cleal being a key voice in there. And, and what about the loss of Marley Packer for this one? Oh, they'll definitely miss Marley Packer there because she's just a little cannonball of energy, like running around, bursting. And her and Poppy Cleal uh, go really well together. Like I mentioned before about Kerry and Meg working together for Gloucester Hartbury, those two really just uh, increase each other's game and the intensity they play at. So our referee for this one is Shane Lewis, assisted by Peter Brunt and Philip Holdsworth. And we're just about ready to get underway. It's the Tyrrells Premier 15s, round six, Gloucester Hartbury against Saracens. And it's going to be Saracens to get things underway. And a kickoff. Well, it's bobbled its way into touch before it reached the 10 metres, so we'll go back. And... Uh, the and, that's, will be for Gloucester. and that's where you kind of, you know, kickers really want to get it exactly on that 10 metre line. So though uh, Saris would have the chance to win it back, but the risk you obviously take by doing that is it doesn't go 10 and then you're giving territory and possession straight away uh, to the opposition. So first scrum of the day. with Rowan White. Here they come again. Good continuity from Saracens in the opening few minutes. Did that one go forwards? It did. Just a little bit. But as we've spoken, the build-up about Saracens' focus on, on doing it up front, when you've got a weapon, the likes of Toffee Cleal, well, you're going to use it. Yeah, they've got a heavy pack. I would say that it's obviously heavier there uh, than the Gloucester Hartbury pack, and they'll look to use that power and really uh, push across. Five. Took a bit of scrum chat in there. <laughs> Could go obviously into more detail, but we'll leave that. So Gloucester Hartbury now break away. Looking to come forward. And out, please. Kick didn't quite get away. We'll play back for Kerry Large to uh, try and make the clearance, which she does. Oh, bobbles along. Might have been a chance for the ball to try and stay in, but uh, beats everybody into touch and uh, ends up being a decent clearance from Large. That just shows the intent that Saracens are wanting to play this game with. They've charged down the first kick uh, that Gloucester Hartbury have gone to do, and that just puts pressure on because it means that then Bianca Blackburn, instead of being able to box kick it, she has to pass it deep back to Kerry Large in the pocket, and then you're losing ground with the kick. Play on, back with Release Saracens red. from the line out. Plenty of pressure around the fringes. They're coming forwards again, Saris, linking well. Lost to Hartbury, though, trying to mess things up, and they do that quite nicely. Nicely, but illegally. <laughs> Diving over the top of that. But again, they're trying to put numbers in there. They're putting pressure on opposition ball, and uh, it's worked out well for Saris, though, because they've just stayed composed. So time off as uh, one of the Saris players is just down getting a bit of attention. That's the development of, uh, well, the second 
elite sports complex down at Hartfree College in the background. And structure in the background. Such great facilities that they've got already. I mean, the pitch is an incredible one to play on. Uh, and obviously Saracens are used to the um, 4G pitch at Allianz Park. So, uh, you know, similar ground as well here. So should be a good running game of rugby. So three minutes on the clock. Just while we've uh, still got a bit of attention. They fixed. Just waiting for confirmation. Just see who's been uh, accurate with the boot. And, well, Gloucester Hartley will be hoping Meg Goddard can uh, keep up the metronome boot with 31 points so far. Not quite the highest uh, point scorer, what with uh, Marley Packer getting all the tries so far this season. But. Uh, Megan Goddard certainly doing it with the boot. Zoe Harrison who's on the bench for Saracens. Just in there behind. And we should be able to uh, see a bit of Meg Goddard at some point soon. Yeah, we can. That's great. So the kick didn't find touch. And Gloucester Hartbury will get a chance to uh, boot it away. Ball taken at the back. Looking to try and drag in the defence. Garnet McKinder Tackle just playing there. the ball onto Kara Wardle. And Wardle presents it back. They're going again, Saracens. Off to the left this time. Tackle comes in, but it's a decent clear out. And Saracens are doing really well to just keep the tempo flowing here. They still go again to the left through Cleal. They're going to go down that short side once more. Release red! Penalty Saracens. And Gloucester Hartbury doing their best to defend this, but resorting to having to do it illegally. I think that as well, uh, the Saracens need to just have a take a little bit of pressure off themselves. So the first kick didn't go 10. Then you get a penalty kick, easy, put it out to touch, but she's missed touch. And then that puts the pressure back onto them. Really, they want to be really nice and clinical. Even if you take a little bit of distance off the kick, just make sure. So then they can, they've got a good line out, they like a set piece, and then they can all settle from there. Big opportunity this for Saracens then. We have got a ball. Time off. Can we have a ball, please. Interesting how tight Saracens uh, are set up there. So you've got uh, Garnet McKinder on the right wing and she's only probably by the post. Uh, whereas as uh, for me personally, when I was playing, I'd want to be right out wide, get myself into that space. Uh, so whether they're looking to do kind of a tighter move or just kind of keep it in their forwards on a driven line out, uh, which we might see. We've just got everybody stood around at the minute. As we uh, wait for play to resume. There we go. Time on. So, yeah, Garnet McKinder is just tighter in. Ball goes up, taken by Fedrighi, Italian international. And Saracen's got a real rumble on here. It's going to be a difficult one to defend. Abby Burton tries to get herself in there, but the try has been scored. Number seven. Route one rugby. <laughs> Saracen's get over through Sonia Green. That's, I mean, when you've got that kind of weapon, it allows you to just play with so much more uh, like relaxed on the territory because you know that you can kick, you know you've got a line out like that, and it then puts a lot of pressure on Gloucester Heartbreak because then they know that if they kick it out, you know, Saracens have a good line out and they're going to have to compete in that area. It was Fadrigi's take to begin with. Then the exchange through the hands and, well, they got some really good go forward. It was the likes of Cleal and Gallagher who were driving the bus. And it was the peel off that. They noticed exactly when to do it. They realised that Gloucester Hartby are driving quite straight. They've peeled off round to the right. Uh, they've, and Gloucester don't react quite quick enough. And then uh, the likes of Sonia Green, very, very experienced player, uh, burrows her way kind of over the line there. Kick goes wide. 
the Saracens, after six minutes, get their name on the score sheet through Sonia Green, and they lead by five points to nil. Restart is made. Saracens just, uh, well, a little bit of inaccuracy from them there. Harriet Austin just uh, couldn't gather the pass and, uh, and on it went into touch. And then that's that's the opposite way of doing it. You actually put a big boot, you kick it deeper. Because again, it's just rugby is pretty much all about pressure. Who's under pressure and who can cope with it. Uh, they force the error with a good line speed up in their defence. And now they end up getting the line out. Cass Evans. It's just floated above everybody. And uh, well, Harriet Austin gets a chance to uh, atone for the error handling wise because she tidies it up at the back. Comes through the hands of Brown onto Visterson. Danish by birth, Nina Visterson. But uh, she will qualify for England. Part of the England Sevens development programme. And here come Saracens again. Let's just say that uh, it is Anna Goddard who's playing at nine for Saracens. Uh, Georgie Gulliver was a late dropout. Penalty Gloucester. Yeah, right decision there completely because she'd done all she could on the floor. She'd done the role, but the uh, the Gloucester Hartby player had done really well. She'd released her hands and then got on that ball. And if you can show that you will have a, a clear right to the ball and you're fighting for it, referee is always going to decide that's a holding on penalty. So really good work right there. The Gloucester Hartbury going into the corner. Kerry Large with that experience. Lines in the middle. Just have another little look back at the try, first try of the game. Second the only try we've had so middle. far. It's technically perfect, really, in terms of the drive, wasn't it? Yeah, all uh, right angles and uh, helping each other. So difficult to defend that as well, because if you throw everybody in and then they peel off, it's, uh, you know, backs almost have to get involved there defending. Close to Hartbury then. Real chance here. Or oh, it was popped up by large, but couldn't quite be held. So, Steel. Rachel Steel. Lund. But it's been turned over by Saracens, and they might get a chance to get a run on here. We've certainly seen plenty of what they can do up front. Now it's a chance to see if the backs can get going through Garnet McKinder. McKinder, all oh, trying to step and go. Around the likes of Abby Burton, but they force Saracens back in field. They are a bigger side, as Susie Appleby was saying in the, in the uh, pre-game interview. And there's another one of the, uh, the big carriers, El Perry. England under-20s played in the uh, England development game. They had a game behind closed doors against South Africa, or was that just nudged forwards? I think it may have been. Just a few unforced errors from both sides, really, because that wasn't under much pressure there, and they're just kind of shoveling it. They're... Um you know trying to pass it under panic and i always think if you're making a pass you need to confidently do it because you've chosen to not because someone's flying up in your face and you just want to get rid of it which i think happened a little bit there so uh calm it down compose for both sides Bianca blackburn Gross. effectively the third choice nine with england toy mason and Natasha Hunt ahead of her. Oh, that Saracens drive was doing well, but well, Blackburn's done well to get that ball back. Had to be intelligent play at the base of that line out then. Good hands. And Hartbury get going. Ellie Kildoon. You can see the threat that she is once she gets going now then. They haven't got anybody there. But eventually Blackburn arrives, feeds it away to Large. Large thinks she's got a gap to go through, manages to find Burton on her shoulder. That was good from Kerry Large. And then Blackburn thought about going one way, got the call the other way. And that was from Beth Jones. And away again from Blackburn. Large defensive line coming up strongly from Saracens. Hannah Austin going in there to try and turn it over. But Gloucester Hartby do their best just to control it. Now then, Large, she's put that little chip in over the top. Has it found touch? It has. 
And it's been touched on its way out. So Gloucester Hartbury will have the line out. Intelligent game management from Large. Yeah, Large, she'll, she'll always just spot that gap. Uh, she's putting the wing under pressure. She's put it in over her head. So she's having to fight for it. And then now um, Gloucester Hartbury get the line out. So clever play by her. And just coming back to Bianca Blackburn. Personally, I don't see how she's third choice. She's such a fantastic player. The tempo she brings, her nines pass is always clinical. Goes straight to hand. I'm not sure what more she has to do to prove herself. Line-out ball is in, and Gloucester Hartbury will be wanting to try and do a Saracens. Well, Poppy Cleal is uh, potentially on the wrong side there. She's trying to push it back on her own side. And, uh, well, she might be lucky to have got away with that. Extremely lucky, playing it on the floor like that. That, uh, that could have been a yellow card. Now, the referee didn't see that minor detail that our camera's picked out. And Gloucester Hartbury would love to go all the way here. Well, players not making enough of an effort to get out of the way there. And finally, referee Shane Lewis is giving the penalty. OK, so Sonia Green eventually is the one to give it away by, yes, yeah, she didn't roll. But before that, uh, Poppy Clear, what she did was actually worse. And Gloucester Hartbury being very nice to her there because it was very obvious she was handling it on the floor. I'm surprised a few studs didn't kind of come her <laughs> way there. Yeah, justice through one way or another. Yes, yeah. But Poppy's one of those players, her and um, Marley, who's not playing today, but both of them, they play right on the edge, which could be really annoying when you're playing against them. But, you know, it works if the ref doesn't see it. She's trying to luck. Ball is taken down from Courtney Gill. Captain England Academy last week, Courtney Gill, then the drive from Catherine Buggy. Up we go round the corner again. And they are showing that they've got a bit of it up front. Decent. Now Blackburn looking to release the backs a little more. Comes through the hands on the little wrap around. Oh, but it wasn't held by Kildoon. And it did just go forwards. So with the style of play that Gloucester Hartbury are trying to play, they're really trying to get it wide to get um, a high try scoring game. It is more exciting and I way prefer it uh, to watch. But obviously there is a higher risk with it because of more passes, they're going wider and then just those little handling errors there. But I think if Ellie Kildoon keeps that, she goes in for the corner there. Uh, so it is, it's risk-reward at the minute, couple of mistakes, but actually when it finally plays off, I think it's a style that, that is really going to suit them and they will get a try out there. I want to sound a few of you may be experiencing uh, a little bit of interruption to our pictures uh, via the, uh, the England Facebook page. Apologies if, uh, if you are experiencing those. Five points to nil. Saracens have this defensive scrum and Poppy Cleal will do what she knows well and pick and go and find Austin. Austin doing well then to look on the outside and find McKinder who's trying to leg drive her way through that tackle in her second season. England touch player is, uh, is going at McKinder. Counter right from Gloucester Hartbury is slowing that one down. Now they get going again. Oh and a lovely little close quarters run round the corner. That was well fed from April Brown, and they're still going. And now it's Cara Wardle. And Wardle is brought down by Kildoon. Saracen's making 40 metres. Now they come again through Goddard. Offside and then Cleal. Cleal with the little wraparound offload. And they're still offloading. Fadrigi now. Saracen's looking so dangerous with ball in hand. Then it's fed to the short side. And it looks like it might be a run in. Is there a last-ditch tackle trying to put them into touch? Lottie Clapp trying to get away, but we're coming back for the penalty. And that just shows Bianca Blackburn's work rate there to track down Lottie Clapp, who is absolutely rapid to try and get across and get her in the corner. Uh, great work in the defence there. Okay, was going in from Gloucester Hartbury, but... It's interesting that Gloucester are really, um, I think they've they've done their homework. They know that Poppy Cleal's a big carrier. And every time she's had the ball so far, she's had two players trying to smash her and someone going in really hard. So which is credit to the coaches. They've obviously recognised the threats. They've practised in training. They know what they're doing, targeting the big runners defensively. Because twice the ball has got out to Garnet McKinder and both times actually she's cut in. Um, so that's interesting there. But then we see Lottie Clapp pin her ears back and go for it. They've opted to go for the post here, Saracens. 
Brown. Played over 240 Premiership games. That's an experienced boot to add three points to the tally. And it's interesting that they have gone for that because we they scored off of a line out. That's definitely they could have kicked for the corner and gone for that again. So uh, that's credit again to the Hartby. They think this is going to be a really close game. They'd rather just keep the points ticking over uh, and then go for those the guaranteed three points, which puts them a uh, converted try away. Gloucester Hartbury maybe being uh, forced into a change here. Eight points now, the advantage for Saracens. Just looks like there's a bit of confusion going on here. I'm not sure what. They're trying to work, yeah. yeah. We're confused, confused, they're confused. Hopefully someone <laughs> on the sideline will uh, we'll keep them informed and keep us informed. Kildoom waits to get things restarted. Kerry Large with a classic hands on hips pose, bit of a frown. <laughs> <laughs> Missed that pose well. <laughs> yeah. It's been an interesting couple of years for Kerry Large since uh, sort of World Cup time with England. Uh, not entirely sure she's been fully in the frame with them or sort of seems to have been a little left out in the cold. So it's probably a bit of a, a mental challenge for her over that time. Yeah, I, I, I think that because uh, she's another player that's very, I think, underrated because what she does, uh, having played alongside her for years, like she will really get that ball wide and she's a selfless player. She like passes the ball. She doesn't often look for the gap herself. So, um, yeah, very, very good player. Ball is well taken from Cleo. You can just see that little edge of international class on players like Poppy Cleo who've got that top level experience returning to Saracens after that season at Bristol. Cleo. And of course, her uh, twin sister Bryony, who is on the bench. It's a really good take from the restart. But not rolling away from Gloucester. And Saracens will have another penalty. And discipline is going to be so key because, as, we, as we've seen so far in the opening 17 and a half minutes, well, Saracens, given a sniff of the chance to get territory upfield, uh, are doing it pretty well. And this is where both teams need to adapt now as well, because the referee is clearly saying he's not going to put up with anyone not rolling out the way. So you've just got to be whiter than white. You've got to be really clear that you're trying to get away from them. Well, this is interesting. Saracens are called for the scrum on the penalty, but quite far out. Uh, you'd think they'd kick, uh, definitely kick that to touch. So they've obviously got some kind of trick up their sleeve. Well, that's certainly what I would have expected. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a chance Five. for Anna Goddard. Six. <laughs> It's all about tempo with Anna Goddard. Kicking game ever improving. Another one of those girls that plays touch, plays touch for England. Bobby Cleal under plenty of pressure there, gets the ball away. It wasn't the tidiest, but Nina Visterson manages to pluck it out of the air. And they play it back again, away from Goddard. Big physical encounter. Away again. Tackle in from Burton, but wasn't quite able to get a hold of her opposite number so Saracen still continue to come again now was that a bit of crossing and taking off the ball it was just uh, a little bit of inaccuracy in the backs from Saracens and Kerry Large just contemplating taking the quick one but she knows she'll have a bit more time to take this one down the near side touchline Nice long kick there from her. But you've got a question Saracen's decision making there. They get the opportunity to kick it long downfield, get territory and possession off of the line out, which has been working well. Instead, they go for a scrum, uh, which you then think, oh, okay, Poppy Cleo will at least run and like uh, smash it up. She doesn't. She gives a loopy pass over their head and then they're back under pressure again. So, a really strange decision and process from them there. Ellie Gilbert gets that ball in it's tucked down Bianca Blackburn under plenty of pressure her forwards are going to have to help, help her out here there is a an advantage being played as referee Shane Lewis going to see enough of an advantage played large she's gone for a big high bomb to try and test them Ellie Kildoon is after that oh and the ball's been knocked forward Kildoon will pick it up and Kildoon will score 
What amazing vision by Kerry Large there. Like, just brilliant. She knew she had the advantage. She's, uh, you're not losing anything by kicking it, but to put the height on that, I now think the Saracens back three are in trouble because that's two kicks that she's um, put to them and both of them they've missed. Now that means they're just going to get more kicks to them. They're going to get more stressed and that is just going to build in their heads. Well, plenty of pressure on Rowan White and she coughed it up. Good game plan. Worked out for Gloucester Hartbury, and that makes things a little bit more interesting. Now Meg Goddard to open her account for the afternoon, which she does. So seven plays eight after 20 minutes. And that's a bit more like it as far as Gloucester Hartbury are concerned. Yeah, paid off well for them, the intensity that they're doing. And yeah, just again, that great spot by Kerry Large and then the, uh, the pressure on those back three. But uh, it's a tough one to get out because once you've dropped one, you then get into a, a you kind of get into a spiral because as the next one come in, I mean, that one was so high. She had so much time to look for that and almost talk herself out of it. I think they're almost better when they're instinctive and you just got to run onto them and get them. But she's looking up, she sees three Gloucester players running at her and then suddenly she loses sight of the ball. Well, we're hoping we've uh, smoothed out a few of the gremlins on the live stream on the Inner Rugby Facebook page. So uh, we hope you're getting a smoother picture from us now. Foster Hartbury on seven, Saracens on eight. Try from Ellie Kildoon, living up to her billing. There she is on the ball again. Saracens trying to tear that ball away in the tackle. And in fact, it is going to be a turnover for Saris. Tricky for Marianne Gittings there. Well, one of the things of going wide is you do end up isolated. If you're isolated, you're just heightening the chances of a turnover just because they're either going to steal the ball off you by a jackal um, or you're going to get done for holding on or something. So in the end, they did just steal it legally. So then, then it's their scrum. Let us know who you're cheering on, where you're watching this game. You can use the hashtag Premier 15s. Or of course, leave a comment if you're watching the live stream on the official England Rugby Facebook Boy! page. Where are you watching? Set. One point in it. Pick from Cleal. Had Goddard behind her, but they've uh, opted to go a little into the wider channels. And Cara Wardle. Tackle move! Tackled by Rachel Lunder, opposite number. Lunder's getting a bit of a shoeing at the bottom of that one. She's uh, going to give away the penalty as well. But that, that's more of what I was expecting when Poppy Cleal was lying there, because it does highlight it to the ref if you do that. Um, Rachel Lund got stuck in there, and then, uh, yeah, she got a shoe. And you know you will when you're lying there. You just go, right, um, you know it's coming. Um, and it just highlights it, and then, yeah, they, they, she gets the penalty against her. I've been at one or two referee briefings where they ultimately say that if you happen to miss a player on the wrong side or lying in the way, don't worry, because it will be fairly well self-policed by the team that have spotted them there, yeah. which I think we saw from Saracens there. I think forwards are more likely to do it willingly. Backs <laughs> generally don't want to take that, so she's accidentally probably landed probably there. probably because the backs are wearing high heels or something. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would hurt, to be fair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not getting stamped on with... Uh, Studs, but stilettos. Yeah. <laughs> like a different kind of Lovely. level to that. Front rows then, Perry Evans and Martinez John right. for Saracens. Buggy Gilbert and Swan. Six. Referee clear with the comms. Anna Goddard. A late change after Georgie Gulliver's gone down. Uh, I think it's illness that has uh, forced Goddard out, but now there's a real chance for McKinder around the outside, or McKinder's going to go all the way. A simple case of hands to the wing and backing the pace. She was capped on the World 7 Series last year. And, well, she's having a great premiership so far. Garner McKinder onto the scoreboard. She's deceptively quick as well, because her, um, her stride length is so long, it almost looks like she's a second row, kind of lumbering along, but she's not. She's absolutely flying. And, uh, yeah, they did really well there to actually make sure that the winger is turned in, which is a winger you never want to do defensively, because once you're turned in, even if someone isn't quicker than you, they're going to gas you. So you've got to kind of stay off a little bit, a little bit of inexperience there, possibly by Mary Ann Gittings. So then, uh, yeah, she just gets caught, and then there's no way you're going to catch her from there. She's been around forever, it feels, as uh, Marianne Gittings, a uh, solid old player, but uh, yeah, she might not fancy watching that one again. Good to hear from those of you who are uh, 
Watching all over the world, Rick Robbins watching on my husband's feed from Ecuador. My goodness me. Graham Davis watching from North Cyprus. Conversion was just curling in, but it would have needed a little more to uh, get over the bar. But Gloucester haven't got their heads down. Look at them. They're sprinting back to the halfway line to make sure they're kicking off and that they are running this intensity. And that's what's nice to see. Heads haven't dropped. They're going right back at them. It's really important now for them that they get this next score so they stay in the game. There's just six points between them now. The Gloucester Hartbury will take confidence from the fact that they've hit back once already. They've got to do it again now. And look at Marianne Gittings with uh, perhaps a little sense of injustice. She's got to go in there and she's the one that makes the first tackle on Poppy Cleal. Gets back into the defensive line. Firing it off to the left. Saracens patiently wait. It wasn't the easiest ball for April Brown to take. She did well. Now Harriet Austin again. Harriet Austin's come through the club at the same time as the likes of Sarah Byrne and Poppy Cleal. Speaking to Rob Kane during the week, so she gets through a lot of the unseen work. She's certainly making herself seen today, doing a great amount of carrying for Saracens. Is she? Oh, well, I thought she was going to be in again. She's uh, just waiting around the back there as Anna Goddard tries to communicate and get the players cleared out. I think Saracens missed an opportunity there because uh, the Gloucester Hartby defence was so tight, so, so narrow. And by playing same way rugby, that just plays into their hands. If they'd have spotted it midfield and launched that back wide, that's when they're going to um, carve them up. Because two big passes and they've got outside the entire defensive line. And then you're just leaving it down to just the full back to try and cover uh, almost a whole pitch. Kerry Second. still got hands on hips. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Whole game. Second playing third. The materials you Premier 15s. So I'd appreciate you go in the gap. Some interesting fixtures to come as well, of course. Next Saturday in round seven. Harlequin said he's taking on Gloucester Hartbury. Saracens welcoming Bristol. If get along to either of those two games, well, they will certainly be worth the entry fee. Ball in from Goddard again. Quickly hooked back. It's then gone to ground. Can I just get that one reset? I did just look messy. And again, I, I'm aware, no expert, but I'm pretty sure you shouldn't be prawning and like <laughs> in that position. You want to get low, scrummaging square. Uh, yeah, not, not sticking <laughs> your shoulders up like that. You can hear Blackburn there. Loudly getting the call. As an eight. Let's drive through it. Ball is hooked back. Lost Hartbury looking a little more settled there. So Cleal will pick and go. Gives it away to Brown. Brown looking on the outside. Big collision in the middle there. It's a good tackle from Rachel Lund. And away from Goddard again. Hannah Austin on the charge. Harry Austin, sorry. Little short ball on the far side. Plenty of defensive numbers there, and they managed to bump Saracens into touch. Again, they're playing that same way rugby were. If they looked up, I think there was uh, two front row players, a back row player, and then Kerry Large. That's all there was coming back. You've got to take that on. If all of the other backs defensively are tied up over there, look up, there we go, we've got the front row. In fact, three front row, because it's the front row replacement as well that's come on. You've got to attack that. You've got to use the mis mismatch and run against them. Uh, Kaylee Bartlett, who was who's been brought into the action. Saracens have managed to uh, snaffle the ball from the line out. Play on, Dropped by Cleo. Save that for the scrapbook. Hasn't really put a foot wrong so far. Goddard. Brown looks to try and put the kick across and test Gloucester Hartbury, but Marianne Gittings is up to it. And then Blackburn, large. It's just been missed and gone behind. And so Kerry Large thinks, well, while we're currently going backwards, maybe it's time to just put this ball into the corner. It's not managed to roll towards touch. So kick is forward. It's not the best. 
the net result is going to be a line out to Gloucester Hartbury, certainly 20 yards forward from where they were. So uh, all in all, Kerry Lard's taking the right option. Yeah, by kicking it really deep into that corner, uh, the back three aren't necessarily the most, you know, the best kickers in there. So then they're put under pressure and they're making a short kick and it's a win for Gloucester really with the possession. First knock on was off Sarries. So from the line-out, Gloucester Hartbury will have the scrum. Yeah, very messy line out there, wasn't it? I don't think either team looked particularly ready for it. Kelly Bartlett, you can see uh, with the number 17 on from Gloucester Hartbury. She's uh, developing her front row skills. Played a bit of back row and second row. I'm sure she's really glad to be pushed, pushed forward in there. Well, she's spotting the opportunity, being mentored by Sarah Byrne, which isn't a bad player to have on side, is it? Set. A, a similar thing moving from the back up to the front. Rather you than me, I will say, though. Now, the pick. That's a really good short side spot from Abby Burton. Up Makes some brilliant yards. Now they need quick ball. It's not coming immediately. Oh, and then the pass just didn't work. Millie Wallace finding, well, not finding Molly Morrissey. And, uh, well, disappointing for Gloucester Hartbury because Abby Burton's break was superb. What a brilliant spot. She not only spotted the space, she went with the wheel of the scrum, got around it, and then really uh, pinned her ears back and went. And that's what I think Poppy Cleal should be doing, rather than looking for that kind of pass. Just carry. Do what you're good at. If you're a big, strong eight, carry as hard as you can, get the defence on the back foot, then you look to go wider with the ball. ball. Gloucester Hartbury will be aware of the amount of time they're getting in the Saracens 22, but so far only coming away with one try. Cleal. Well, she was listening to you, Kat. She's gone for the carry. Yeah, she's listened well, well done. <laughs> got that earpiece in nice and, and secure. Wide. Great. Anna Goddard then wants to get the back line going into the hands of try scorer Mackinder. Then into Goddard again, all quick hands, and it was well held by Sonia Green. Goddard off to the left. Austin, then into the hands of Galligan. Second season at the club for Rosie Galligan. Now they're going down the far side again, and there's a little bit more room to cut in field here. And Lottie Clapp is still going. And then she's put to ground by Courtney Gill, and that might have been high. And Well, the referee's got a hand in the pocket, and I don't think Courtney Gill spotted the card here. Well... I don't know whether that's a little harsh, whether it was high enough and uh, warranted it. So Lottie Glapp was dancing around Courtney Gill to begin with. Let's have a little look. Oh, uh, yeah, it, that's it was, up round the net. It was one of those seatbelt tackles, wasn't it? I think she's second row, panicking that a winger's stepping, and, and when you've got a winger as quick as Lottie Clapp there, um, I think she's just kind of dived to try and get her, and, and she's just gone too high, can't do it, got to get lower. Right call, uh, but one of those at once. It's unfortunate, Courtney's not a dirty player at all, but player welfare is the okay. first and the most important thing here. Now that's the vice captain off the field. Please. Thank you. Ten minutes in the bin. Thank you. Gloucester Hartbury 7, Saracens 13. Can Saracen strike from here? They're looking for Cleal, didn't quite like find her, and in two. fact it wasn't straight. So that's a let-off for Gloucester Harbury from the yeah. penalty. Scrum. And they will have the scrum. Yeah, important for Gloucester Harbury here that they obviously now they've got a player down that they want to keep uh, in control of possession. Uh, they're going to want to keep it, and then any uh, possession that they do kind of let uh, Saris have, they're going to want to make sure that's deep in their 22, get them out of the scoring zones, uh, play the clock down almost, wait for Courtney to come back on the pitch, and then they're back to a full complement. Of course, it'll uh, be over half time that, uh, that they're down to 14. Crunch! Often you see that actually the side with 14 end up scoring. Um, and you've seen it many times before, so uh, hopefully we'll see that. Gloucester Hartbury under an enormous amount of pressure here. Scrum going backwards, Saracens demolishing them there. And look at the delight on Sonia Green's face. Well, after that, surely you call Scrum again. 
but then if I was crossed to Harbury, I'd definitely just force a wing to go in or something or a centre just to like get a bit of weight in there because they've been evenly matched 8v8, but 8v7, that Saracen's pack is just absolutely annihilated. And, and yet they have, and rightly so, you would go for a scrum after that dominant display. But come on, Gloucester, put someone in, put Kerry in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she'll, she'll love that. What is going to be the option? They're just going with seven again. Or are they? Oh, no, it's... Uh, I can't quite see uh, Bianca Blackburn getting involved. Five. Goddard. Gets that one in, it's still getting go forward. Poppy Cleal controls it at the back, then picks and goes. Plays it deep to Clant, who's come in off the left wing. Just up against Release Kerry Large, right. who did well to make the tackle. No, stay back. Thank you. Saracens right under the shadow of the posts here. They go off to the right. Oh, a little juggle from Centre. Cara Wardle. Okay. No, now it's away again. Back in. Saracens just uh, struggling to work out which way they're going. Will that matter? It's Cat Evans who takes the next few metres. Goddard fires it to the left that time. Fedrigi takes an extra metre or two. Gloucester Hartbury defence working hard. Now Terry presents it back. Now Cleal. They know they need to apply the numbers to stop Poppy Cleal. It's good quick ball though. And this could present an opportunity around the outside. Oh, can Gloucester just stop them? Stay out of the game, Rowan please. White must have thought she was in they go close quarters round the short side nearly caught the referee out with that one Saracens go again have they got numbers under that Time off. referee is just going to have a word with his assistant here Rosie Galligan so is thinking that she might have scored I think <laughs> try awarded and that's probably a let off for Rowan White there because if I was Garnet McKinder, I'd be going absolutely crazy. 2v1, you've got to do that again. Marianne Gittings has turned her hips in. That's a simple pass and that's a score in the corner. So, bit of a let off <laughs> for her there that they eventually got the score anyway. Well, here's the replay of the try going down. And Gallagher, the one at the bottom. Good work from the referee and his assistant. But the scoreline just beginning to uh, reflect Saracen's upfront dominance. Tricky conversion effort. stops short so just a couple of minutes to go to half time that's according to our watch we'll be on the referees watch of course that was the initial drive from Sonia Green to get a meter short got a really good angle here oh there might have been a sense that that was just lost forward mightn't that I was gonna say that actually might have just been dropped drop forward from that angle there but with no replays they've just uh, decided to go for it well, interesting moment there for Saracens then getting the score might have been a question over it here they come again Harriet Austin now they're running onto this one at pace but it was just dropped by Wardle all has shuffled forwards Saracen's back line looking like they were coming forward with real anticipation there. Real pace on the ball. Yeah, it's just some of the execution of the passes, I think, actually. Because uh, if they're out on front and running at pace, then those are the ones that you will line break through. And that's what we, uh, what they need to do to get Lottie Clack out wide. A nice flat pass and hit on. So I think 
uh, Gloucester Hartbury is still just going for the seven in the scrum, even though it's their ball. Uh, so he, even kind of more key, I think, on your own ball uh, to make sure, because, you know, after the first phase that you've hit in any way, you don't really need all 15. <laughs> Poppy, it's never going to be yours like that. <laughs> and that's, you know, those little things, just chucking it on the floor. It's little things that wind players up, but yeah. she'll just try and get into their heads that's as much as possible. Energy. Yeah. On her first cap against Scotland last year. While Marley Packer scored seven tries, not involved today. Well, Poppy scored five of her own. Blackburn gets it in, front row is pushed up immediately by Saracens and they get themselves the penalty. Well, Gloucester Hartbury scrum is in all sorts of trouble. Not entirely sure that just the absence of Courtney Gill is, uh, is necessarily the issue. Bobby Cleal has decided to tap this one and go. Sonia Green. Tackle. Hartbury trying to hold her up there. But it's there for Goddard. They fancy another score before the break here. They fancy the uh, bonus point score. And stepping straight through the middle is Cara Wardle. On her first start, just turned 18, Cara Wardle. She's having a great game so far. Then it's into the hands of El Perry. Been chipped forwards. And that will be the final act of the first half. Well, we've seen three tries from Saracens and the one from Gloucester Hartbury. It's interestingly poised at the break. Gloucester Hartbury on seven. And Saracens, 18. Uh, she's got two minutes left, so it was... Uh... So four tries to enjoy from the first half. Let's have a look at how the first 40 minutes has unfolded. This is the opening shot from Saracens. And, well, it was what we knew to expect from this game and from their forwards effort. Yeah, straight away they've gone in there with their intent. Big forward pack, uh, clever driving uh, line up all there, and then they just get over the line. Sonia Green. Sonic, as she's known, been in the club since she was 19 and captain for the last couple of years, incidentally. Showing good awareness from the catch and drive. I'm sure it's much more technical than just get the brutes over the line, but, <laughs> you know, we'll take it from, we'll take their word for it. Absolutely. But Gloucester Hartbury hit back and it was intelligent play from Kerry Large to put up the big kick. Plenty of pressure on the defence and uh, well Ellie, can, Ellie, Ellie Kildoon able to uh, to pounce yeah just really good reactions from that uh, good from Kerry to spot it good reactions from Ellie to react to the drop ball just literally pick it up one scoop and then she's over the line right on the spot good confidence from the youngster there as well Doing our A-levels currently is Ellie Kildoon, turned 18 in September, a real future prospect for England. And this was Garnet McKinder. And as we mentioned, Marianne Gittings had uh, just got herself turned inside and Garnet McKinder able to show her a clean pair of heels into the corner. Yeah, good execution as well from the handling, just to move that pass, all the passes out in front so she can hit onto it. Really good fix and give there. And then she's flying down that wing. This is our rear view of Saracen's second try as McKinder got away.
and this took a couple of extra phases didn't fancy the easy route of the 2v1 they wanted to go forwards over the line <laughs> got to keep up the score of uh, a forward scoring it was Sonia Green to begin with and then the try was awarded to Courtney Gill sorry to Rosie Galligan what am I saying getting my fives confused of course Courtney Gill I'm looking at my notes in front of me Courtney Gill was the yellow card of course and uh, it's Galligan who got over yeah, that's a pretty bad Simbin. Get Simbin and score for the opposition. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the angle that gives away a little detail that uh, perhaps Gloucester Hartbury won't want to see because uh, Gallagher there, oh, might just lose it, might just ground it. We'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, as the officials have done. Gloucester Hartbury 7, Saracens 18. What about the rest of the Tyrrells Premier 15s then? Well... Currently, it's Bristol ladies five, Wasps ladies nil. It's nil nil. Uh, oh, sorry, we don't have the score. We don't have an update yet from Darlington Moden Park Sharks. Waterloo leading Richmond by seven points to five. That's one to watch, certainly. Worcester losing out 44 nil to Harlequins ladies. That's a half time score, and that. Uh, that looks like it might be pretty ugly for Worcester. I really but thought then when it looked like it was nil-nil with Darlington, I was like, oh, it can't happen again. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> Two did. weeks it in a row. A, it was a nil-nil final score last week, of course, wasn't it? Uh, so Harlequins ladies, well, they're certainly looking good against Worcester and uh, they've been one of the teams that's really got things right in the, uh, in the Tyrrells Premier 15s. And well, here's a little film about how they've been getting on. What's impressive about Harlequins is how seriously they're taking women's rugby, a club as a whole and as an individual player, as you know, it's got the ambition and ability to go the furthest. You know, it's as professional as it, as it can be. So there's no doubt that Harlequins are taking it very seriously and all the girls in turn buy into it. And I think it shows in our performances week on week. Well, it's like a, this is a, our exciting second season. We completely, you know, came to Harlequins, took over the reins in terms of like trying to get a new set up with Aylesford and prove, providing a real infrastructure and set up to the players there. And then we had loads of new faces and new players from various other components. And it just shows you what hard work can do if you get the culture on the field and off the field right. There's a huge mix of players here at Harlequins and I think something which makes the club Harlequins so successful is we've got such a huge amount of really good solid players and then when you add into that internationals from all over I think it's a really nice blend. We get so many of us at training so we can run against each other we've got two really strong sides now and I think that's why we are doing so well at the start of the season. We fight for each other we play for each other and I think that's what gets us the wins. Female rugby players are just the same as their male counterparts. They're really excited about being at a great venue and the Stoop is a phenomenal venue for us to be playing at. I've played at the Stoop before, but obviously under England women and haven't played here for a, for a couple of years. So it's, it's going to be nice to play here in quarters rather than in white and, um, and see how we go. It's all come together and we've all waited for this moment to be under the colours and I think as a team it just means a lot. Like We want to play quick, fast rugby and we want to show people what we're really about. So. Hopefully we'll get five from five today.
we had a lot of excitement in the team today and what we've been really working on is trying to get an 80 minutes performance. You know, in the past um, few games that we've played, we've played really well in patches, we never really got it together for the full 80. So we're really pleased that we managed to do that and stick to our game plan. And to beat a side that is as good as Bristol with that many points, you know, the girls are elated. Well, we've had to come out of our little Harlequins VT because uh, our referees decided we're, uh, we're going to crack straight into the second half. So uh, it was lovely hearing from Rachel Burford just then, but uh, well, Cat Merchant, you can, uh, you can tell us probably what, what Rachel Burford was saying at some point. Yeah, Harlequins are loving pre-season. That, yeah. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Tackle made, release. Hold, hold. Harlequins having a great time. They've been five out of five. Looks like they're going to be six out of six with all the bonus points. So they are well in control. But this is second against third. It's Saracens visiting Gloucester Hartbury. Cat Merchant with us in co-commentary. And Saracens, well, they have their tails up with the lead. And Saracens replacement, Eloise Hayward, is on to the field. That ball's gone into the corner. And Gloucester Hartbury will uh, well have some defending to do at the start of this second half. Very clever kick there, because if you can get it over the uh, winger's head, but in front of the fullback, and you can just get it to roll into touch like that, uh, you're getting really good territory from that. So good spot, good heads up, and good execution of that kick. Down for Green, Cleal, looking to try and get it on the wraparound. Can be a real danger running on at full pace, full pace Poppy Cleal. Now Saracen's looking to come round the outside with Rowan White. Then back in field. It's Zoe Harrison who's on for Saracen's. As they look to try and come round that left side. Short ball. Martinez Gian just stopped short. Now they go again through Goddard. Oh, it's just been lost forwards. Saracen's building something nice there. And then just the handling error undoing them. We talked about the youth earlier, like standing up across the Hartbury. And Tabitha there, the number seven, she just went so low on Poppy Cleal, who did a big carry, proper chop tackle, uh, really textbook, round the ankles, gets her down. Really good work uh, in that by bringing Zoe on as well. I think Zoe Harrison, they're definitely going to add to their kicking game because April had a, a solid half, but I think the kicking boot wasn't really a friend today. So I think Zoe coming on could just give them a little bit more of that composure and territory. Zoe Harrison, Premiership top point scorer last year, leading the way this season with 45. Good drive here from Saracens, but well, Gloucester Hartbury have managed to weather that scrum and get the ball away. And given the problems they were having up front towards the end of that first half, well, they'll be pleased with that. Yeah, half-time talk must have been quite strict, probably, about what they needed to do in that scrum, and, and it's worked, and they've managed to kick that away under quite a lot of pressure. So they've uh, got away with that there very nicely. Harrison's will go again. Oh, it's just over the head of Harrison. Go on, let's go. The referee said that went forward. Might have been tight on that decision, but uh, Charlotte Foe was straight on that to react and jump down onto the floor when she got a sense of an opportunity to win that possession back. Yeah, she darted onto that. Just, uh, and that's, that's the keenness, putting your body on the line. You're literally diving on any ball, and that shows the team that wants it more is the team that's willing to do that. Terry Harrison, of course, there with the number 20 on her back. One of seven uncut players named in the England EPS. Joe Brown, Katie Mattinson, Maggie Tuima, Abigail Dow, Jess Breach from Quinns, and then Ellie Kildoon, who we've seen. And now Zoe is uh, onto the field. In scrum. That scrum has just moved a little too much, so we're going to have that one reset. Meg Goddard will have been hoping to, uh, well, Thanks. do her best to try and overtake Zoe Harrison given that she started the game, but uh, Harrison is now on to ensure that she keeps her nose in front. Yeah. Personal Focus battle of the kickers there. 
crouch. Plenty of young voices we can hear in the crowd, cheering them away. Saracen's getting the shove on. It is still on the Gloucester Hartbury side. That's really good work to have kept that alive and large. She's just sliced that one off the outside of the boot. Ellie Gilbert to hook that back. That scrum was going back so quickly to be able to control herself beyond one foot and keep, I mean, she had three attempts at that to get that back. Fair play to her. That is really, really difficult skill to do. And the control from Abby Burton at the back as well. Managing to get her hands in and take that out without knocking it on. Yeah, I think uh, eights love it. If the scrum's going forward, they can have a nice pick. It's all, everything's nice, it's easy. But those are the ones that just show the skill that you can do when you're under pressure going backwards and you still manage to get the ball. Rachel Lund's going to end the game completely covered in tape. She's got one arm taped up, the other one now, like the mummy look. Just a momentary stoppage. Maybe making up for the short half time. They're thinking, actually, we will get a bit of a break here. Yeah. Heartbreak. Heartbreak, can well, you step a metre, please? Uh, any problems getting hold of an uninterrupted live stream of this game? Had a few testing internet issues uh, here at Gloucester Hartbury, but uh, we are now broadcasting on YouTube, so we hope you're with us. Big tackle. Really nice from Abby Burton. She's really growing into this game, is Burton. Looked good through that first half. Saracens come round the corner. Harrison, good comms there. And just probes into that corner. And she just keeps turning Gloucester Hartbury back to face their own line. And well, defensively, it's a constant battle for the home side currently. Just by having a, a good kicker, it can really pin teams back and it completely changes how they are then able to play because they're constantly having to play outside of their 22. And there's not as much you could do from there. You're generally going to kick it back, which means Saracens get another go at it. So it's a clever play. Again, one of those ones that just rolls out into touch. Line out. It's like that's not. It's not straight, says the referee. So the option will be for Saracens. I mean, talking about the kicking, it's almost the sort of elephant in the room with the women's game, isn't it, Cat? Because over the years, it has improved massively. No one's pretending it's it's up there with the men's game, but certainly when you have exponents like Zoe, like Meg Goddard, and of course at England, the likes of Katie McLean and, and Emily Scarrett, it is proving that, that the women's game is developing with the skill base and, and, the, and the kicking is much better than it ever was. Yeah, I think having more time together, there's more time to practice kicking and everything like that. I do think uh, gender-wise, boys kick footballs around from the, you know, from the age of three and that's a given thing, whereas girls generally are pushed into playing netball and hockey and things. But now there are more options for girls, hopefully kick in across all sports will we'll get better yeah very fair point poppy cleel's controlling this one with the feet pretty nicely and she's dummied out to the outside and stepped back in off the right boot tackle me playing like a center the number eight Seven. now it's popped up saracens knocking on the door again fighting her way through is san martino gian dutch international looking for a bit of a pick and go Gone half a yard backwards there, if anything. Then it's tight again. Are they over? Referee says yes, they are. Saracen score their fourth try. Four try bonus. And Poppy Cleal is the last one to come up with the ball. And as you said, playing a bit like a centre there. I'm just laughing because someone once referred to Rocky Clark uh, prop as a centre. And I was just thinking in my head then, can you imagine Rocky Clark and Poppy Cleal <laughs> in the centres together? That would be a pretty terrifying thing to see. Well, let's have a look at that one again. It was pretty up the jumper sort of stuff. Yeah, it's just, there is just Cleal. You can just see waiting for it. No... Sonia Green with the first little dig. And Cleal wants to go quicker again. She's so strong and so powerful. Oh, okay. There are all the numbers on her, but she still manages to wriggle around. 
I think when you're not sure who's scored a try and there's all bodies in the way, that's got to take something away from it, I think. You, you know, you want to see the Garnet McKinders running wide, footwork, you're like, clearly, yeah. But um, obviously still very important. But yeah, I'd like to see Saracens move it just a bit wider. You want to back where you can. <laughs> yeah. Very, get it to the wingers. It's the only people who should ever score. <laughs> so we Harrison adds the extras then. Decent conversion effort. And at Gloucester Hartbury 7, Saracens 25 now, and they're beginning to just put a fair amount of daylight between themselves and the home side. Kerry Large cheering him up though. Captain clapping, like going, come on. They, they know that they've got to do something. You can't let a team like Saracens run away with it. You've got to keep at them. We need that oval thing, please. Not sure who just kicked that on, but <laughs> just but yeah, kicked it the wrong direction. Their radar is completely off. Right, we have so a ball. The player can come on then. And Ellie Kildoon. Yeah, she's just coming off the pitch, so she can come on. I think we've got some uh, contemplation of changes. Saracen's bringing on Jerry Thomas. Loves the big collisions, does Thomas. He's played England under 20s and England A. Goddard, Anna Goddard. Of course, we have Anna Goddard on as the starting nine for Saracens. Meg Goddard in midfield for Gloucester Hartbury. Zoe Harrison is just has come on for this second half, and her management with the boot is exemplary so far. Just so important, it really can just then. Saracens can now play out of anything, they can play deep. Um, you know, and get themselves into the areas where they want. They forced a not straight uh, line out last time, and then it just gives them possession, and then they can do what they like doing with their forwards play, uh, either pick and goes, keeping it tight, but it just gives them that extra edge. In, I thought it was um, strange to see Zoe not starting, actually. So maybe they were just having a look at April, but Zoe's been doing so well, and she's immediately shown her impact. Well, given the position that Hart Gloucester Hartbury were in at the table, it's not as if Saracens would have looked at it and thought, well, we'll give April a run because we view this as a weaker opposition. They, yeah, they, they can't have. They knew this was top of the table, so maybe they went with uh, experience. Or you, you never know with the decisions, really, but uh, it was one that I was surprised to see. Yeah, as well, Gian and I'm up too. So they're still Hartbury out of this. They are still really wanting to go for it. You can tell by the body language. Got to try and win possession from the scrum at some point. That one's gone down on the front. Oh, quite a heap of bodies there. Yeah, very, it's very messy in there. Anna Goddard has done well. Just 19 years of age, called in to uh, start this one at a relatively late stage. Another one of those touch players for England. Saracen's number nine. She's not the biggest. I don't know thing. Although Bianca's uh, hardly tall either. So That's next true. to each other they are. But Bianca's a little square, isn't she? In terms Five. of physicality, she's got the sort of Six. a little bit more robust in the shoulder area, and, yeah. uh, and that's that's perhaps a little bit more experience, shall we say? Bianca's stacked. We yeah. can say it. <laughs> yeah. So he Harrison. Oh, and then it's a nice little ball back inside for Lottie Clapp. Gloucester Hartbury looking to force the turnover there though, and they've got it. Just came forward. Well, it was in the hands of Gloucester Hartbury there. Referee deeming that we would have the scrum. Good support play there by Lottie Clapp, just from the blindside winger. Instead of just staying out there and kind of just not getting the ball, to actually track the inside lines off of the player's shoulders that are running out, you just add that back inside ball, that extra unmarked player, so then you can pop up kind of anywhere on the pitch. So nice to see that too with a work rate. Well, Harriet Austin makes way. Had a decent game. And, uh, well, just in case Gloucester Hartbury think they're seeing double, it is Bryony Cleal. Twin sister is on the field. Head of girls PE in South London. Not in the whole of South London, in a school, obviously. Just to clarify. Decent drive on from Saracens again, but... 
Is this going to be a run all the way around the outside? Little bit of stop and go. Lottie Clapp trying to make the tackle. Ball is thrown back in field. Just about got away with it. Beth Jones under plenty of pressure. Penalty. Sonia Green not rolling away. They tap and go. Blackburn wants to keep the tempo up. Molly Morrissey. Another one of those players that was in that England training camp as they played South Africa a couple of weeks ago. Large. On to Kildoon. Large again, under plenty of pressure. Continues to go the same way, but Gloucester Hartford don't want to get themselves isolated here. Blackburn getting in there to try and show that that ball is coming out, which it is. Saracens have turned it over. Coming forwards is Wardle once again. Five tries in the last two games in the A-League. Evans. Now Harrison. Onto the ball is Lauren Cattell. Cattell with all the international experience, but Rowan White just couldn't hold on to it. That's one of the things that Lauren Cattell is so good at. She really carries it to the line, and when it just looks like she's going to be double tackled, she then moves that ball across, which obviously means there's a player either unmarked or only half marked. So, really skillful, and then just uh, just couldn't keep a hold of it though here. But that that's a short, you know, that's got to be a try off of that. Famous Saracen since 2013. Lauren Cattell, 20 England caps under her belt. She can play lots of different positions as well. She can play 10, 12, 13, and, and you know, she has been put a fullback as well. So, um, really skillful player that can um, very, uh, oh, I can't think of it, versatile. There you go, get there in the end. Big shove coming from Saracens, but they've kept the ball at the back there. Abby Burton again working hard. Nasari's got the shove on. Blackburn with the clearance. Not found touch. It's ended up working more as a bit of an up and under, but then the Saracens juggernaut has served to take Beth Jones into touch, and there wasn't much her right leg could do as uh, four of the forwards came on top of her. Yeah, I'm not sure Beth Jones will be thanking Bianca for that one. <laughs> Either put a bit more distance on, or, uh, yeah, not rather than catch it with two players waiting to smash you into touch. Not really what you want. Well, it may have been a tidy up job as, uh, as the ball failed to find touch. Off Blackburn. I like that we've seen both teams though take quick taps on penalties. It just shows the intent that they're wanting to speed up the game, like have intensity about them, and that's really good. And yeah, even to see it from uh, Gloucester Hartbury, it doesn't look panicked. It just looks like they're all deciding to do this together and they are going to go quick. They're reacting well as a team. Uh, uh, like you said earlier, they need to just be careful not to get isolated because they're going to one side and when they're coming back in, they're hitting one runner in. So the risk of doing that when you just have one runner is obviously if, uh, if Saracens are hunting in twos for the tackle, one tackles, the next one comes in straight over the ball. So uh, I think they need to be running more forward plays, running two together so they can link on and the next one's there to support straight away. You can certainly see from Gloucester Hartbury what's caused plenty of problems for other teams in the league, can't you? They, they've, they've got the ability, they've got some clear game management in those experienced England halfbacks in Blackburn and Large, uh, and then the talent in the midfield as well. So it is a lot of that youth that's really in that forward pack that, that is learning, and learning at quite a rate, no doubt, here in the, uh, in the Tyrrells Premier 15s. Saracen's just outclassing them in that area so far in this one. It's been presenting the platforms and, well, here they go again. One Cleal to another. Backformed. And now Anna Goddard gets it away. Harrison looks for the miss pass. And then it's from Lottie Clapp. And then it goes out to the wider channels. And have they got the opportunity to put McKinder in again? Yes, they can. Second try for Garnet McKinder. And that time, no mistake from Rowan White in terms of making sure the ball went all the way. <laughs> yeah, Fix did the two-on-one. Nice pace onto that as well. And the whole team, you can tell it still means to them because they're all running over, congratulating each other. And, and uh, that's really nice to see they're still doing. They look like a real team, I think, today, like bonding well. It's a good finish as well there because actually it's not, it's not all done. Like She's got work to do still, a bit of footwork, get the hand out uh, to finish that one. Fifth try for Saracens. 
as we approach the hour mark. Not bad at all, but just shy of the upright. We've not seen much. Gloucester haven't had much possession, actually, of anywhere, or, you know, where they'd want to have it. They've had it in their 22, whereas in the first half, they did have a lot of possession in the attacking 22, but they just didn't quite manage to convert that to points. Just those last kind of passes that didn't quite go to hand. Oh, they did go to hand, but then they were dropped. Just those, those fine changes and actually this could be a very different game i think because i think gloucester could have gone another two tries in this realistically but they've just kind of gone begging from them it's the voice of cat merchant with us on commentary for this live stream oh and striding straight through jerry thomas finding a way into open water Goddard looks one way, then goes the other. Oh, is that a little forward, perhaps? Nothing doing from the referee, and they're combining well here, Saracens, forwards and backs. Good interplay. Now it's away again from Goddard. It's looking ominous here as Poppy Cleal feeds a lovely pass. Left to right, over to the right, but Sonia Green's pass to Makinda has gone forward. I was going to say, if the first one wasn't, that one definitely was. Well, got to... was right in line. Yeah, it's just, and it's where the hands finish up. You could see uh, Sonia Green, Sonic, uh, her hands are going forward, like, through that. But um, before that, though, the execution, really good, because they are fixing and giving and just simple things. I like now that Saracen's starting to offload, because offloading just keeps the intensity up. You get in behind the defensive line, and it just means that Gloucester Hartbury are constantly having to chase back. They're not on organised set defence. They're having to clamber back and just kind of defend whoever they can. Well, we see it from Saracen's men, the blueprint of forwards and backs, making a bust through, getting the offload away, and then, as you say, the defensive line is constantly chasing back. And we're watching the women do it ably in Gloucestershire this afternoon. Still no changes at half-back for either side. Quick ball away from Blackburn onto Large. Coming into play is Tatiana Hurd. Happy to do a bit of carrying since she's stepped onto the field. And then Kildoon and well, she's scragged by replacement Bryony Cleal. Abby Burton not held in the tackle, but presents it back for Blackburn. And then Large. Very large. Oh, that's good from Large and finding a bit more space still going and not held. Almost a little bit of the splits there from Tabitha Copson, but she's still going. But has the ball been wrestled away by Saracens? Indeed it has. And Anna Goddard looks to see whether they're ready to get a bit of go forward again. And Valeria Fadrigi has uh, put her hand up to do a fair bit of that in this game so far. And she does it again, joined the club this year, was playing in that Women's Rugby World Cup in Ireland for Italy. That ball well Go attempted forward. to be offloaded back by Saracens, but it's actually only found a Gloucester Harpery hand. The referee says we'll have the scrum. Not too keen to play an advantage and let them go on, our referee, this afternoon, is he? Gloucester Hartbury were in possession there. They might have built or something. Well, especially if you think about how the scrum's been going. Gloucester's scrum has been under so much pressure that actually let them play the advantage because at least they keep the possession. So uh, that he's not actually putting them in a very good position here, considering that. And I think referees need to consider that as part of is this an advantage to give them the scrum? Absolutely. Well, something that... Kerry Large or the coaches should be aware of to try and get that message through because not giving them an awful lot of the, the time once the infringement has occurred when they're in possession of the ball. And there we go, case in point. Lost to Hartbury under pressure to try and hold on to it, which they do. And now it's in the hands of Large. Then out the back again. And oh, they're all throwing it with a fair amount of gusto. Eddie Gildoon has to take it high in the air. And then good supportive call she got on the shoulder from Beth Jones. Blackburn 
Large again, a little bit of confusion. Courtney Gill. Rock formed! Played 10 minutes less than everybody else, of course, after that yellow card. Large in the tackle, just swung around, manages to find the offload. Bit of a no-look pass there that finds Tabitha Copson. Copson, who uh, had that little half break a moment ago. Blackburn to the left. Large. Oh, now then, did that come off the hands or the feet? The referee says the hands. I know that they're wanting to create tempo and they're chasing the game, but that handling there, that, that was poor. Uh, I hate to say it, but how many of those eight passes were either behind someone, over their head, or too far? And, it, and I don't know whether that's come from kind of pressure or panic, but these are all normally good passes of the ball, but it's just killing them. Because I always say, pass to somebody at full pelt running in front of them, that's a line break. Pass just, you know, 10 centimetres behind them, and actually suddenly you're stopped, you're hit behind game line, you can't Constantly putting yourself and your team under pressure by doing that. Georgia Lingham comes on for Garnet McKenna then. We've also had Georgia Bradley come on for uh, Tab of the Copson. Or in fact, not four, but uh, these players coming on and off the field. Players slipping back. You can see there that uh, Kaylee Bartlett has gone back to that second row position to make way for Bradley to join the front row effort. And Saracens. Look at the control they have when they're in possession at the scrum. Gloucester Harpery having no say in it whatsoever. And the ball fed away to Harrison and then Clapp receives it from Cattell. And then here comes Saracens again. Cleo, they're just coming forward with more accuracy. Saracens, Harrison. Oh, that one was uh, just a little bit floated. Kerry Large putting her body about everywhere to make the tackles and in doing so, getting in that passing channel, she's forced the error from Saracens and that was well played by the Gloucester Harpery skipper. Yeah, she's putting a lot of pressure on, she's leading by example, she's getting all the other girls up there with her being like, come on, let's do this. Uh, but the example there by Saracens, all, apart from that last pass, which was forced by uh, Kerry there to like make them make a bad pass, all the other passes were out in front and clinical. So uh, it just shows the difference of what you can do with possession when you've got good ball. Blackburn. That, that scrum controlled a little bit more. Burton had more time to get that to a scrum half. Then Large, they're going through the hands and trying to find a bit of room. Now they find Kildoon. Kildoon's the danger runner. She goes a little stop go again, but then manages to play it into Jones. They've avoided the touchline on this Please occasion. Which Saracens have managed to grab them into a few times. Now it's back in for Large. And then the replacement, Georgia Bradley, just onto the field. Evades the clutches of Saracens, keen to turn it over. And then Ellie Gilbert, and then off the shoulder, then Blackburn again. This is nice from the Gloucester Hartbury backs. And they cut back in field. Marianne Gittings. Made. Rockford. This is better consistency. Better passes in front, as Cat Merchant was talking about a moment ago. Blackburn off to the right. Heard needs to be on the shoulder here. Oh, she's Got just knocked it on. That could have been a real advantage chance. And now the referee is playing an advantage. Saracens come forwards in the hands Not of Wardle. Still going. Goddard. Sonia Green just ships it on. Uh, I really feel for Gloucester Hartbury there because actually that looked so good. I mean, they had a load of possession there, they um, loads of phases. It all just looked right. And then uh, to just lose it, and then Saracens just play so hard and then put them back under pressure again. But so much better by Gloucester Hartbury there. Worth saying by Ellie Kilden there, like I'm sure I said her surname wrong, but um, really good skill set. So she um, she's running on the outside and then she changes her, she just ball transfers across. So she's able to hand off and then she's able to do an offload one handed because she's got the ball in the right hand. So many times now you see uh, wingers or players running down with the ball in the wrong hand and it just limits their options. They then can't hand off, they can't offload, but so really good quick transfer of the ball there. Beth Jones makes way. Just put a few refreshments onto the field while the uh, player receives attention. Yeah. 
it again. Oh, it's just that like twin blue. Mm -hmm. So weird seeing Bryony and Poppy together. They're just <laughs> carbon copies, aren't they? They're big, strong girls. That they are. See, Poppy's just uh, moved to the near side. Playing on the blind side flank. Keep it on! Now then. If the referee was this side, he yeah. might decide that that's a penalty. <laughs> yeah, she had no rights to that. The, the ball's still in the scrum. She's pretty much moved forward into prop there, I think, trying to scrummage and then tries to dive <laughs> on the ball. Like, so a lot going on there. The canny players get away with it all. And so far today, Poppy Cleal has been doing exactly that. <laughs> Incredibly valuable to this Saracens team. Blackburn. It's at the back, Burton picks. Misses out the scrum half, plays straight to large. And now they go out the back and the replacement onto the field. Ellie Underwood gets it, but Hartbury, well, they've passed it down the line and just gone about 15 metres backwards so far. They haven't managed to get much go forward as the Saracens line comes on to them. Need to make those hits and get those quick offloads, as Cat Merchant was describing a few moments ago. One runner up and another on the shoulder. Kildoon into touch. Good tackle from Georgie Lingen. Yeah, good defence, pushing them where they want to. And but Gloucester are starting to do the things they need to, but it's just that kind of summarises their day, really, doesn't it? They get a, a run of good plays, good phases, and then either drop it or into touch. It's just, it's close, but it's just not quite there. So now making way, Anna Goddard put in a decent effort. And Eloise Bloomfield comes onto the field to take over at scrum half. Gets her hand straight onto the ball. Not the easiest of first passes from her for Cleal to take. Yeah, those are the ones you want pelted at your feet. <laughs> Have that, you don't need your hamstrings. Needs to warm up those hands a little, perhaps, Bloomfield. That was the first effort. the hands of Kildoon. Oh, and the Underwood being cheered on down the sideline. That was a lot better by Gloucester Hartbury. Their moves, their decoy runners were a lot flatter. So it just meant that the ball didn't have to go so deep. Like you said before, the last phase, they had to chuck it back 15 metres before they actually went anywhere. Where was that? A lot flatter, punchier into that defence and just looks a lot better. Okay, Harper, you have to step. Up, step. Harper, step, please. Cass Evans. Yes! Yeah, forwards. Across to Harper with the advantage. Large. Plays it on to Hurd as well, who's having a couple of decent busts through that middle. She's actually looked more dangerous when she's decided to take it on physically than perhaps try to run around the outside, Tatiana Hurd in that area, Kildoon. She's been a marked woman for most of this second half. Marianne Gittings then with the carry, but Saracens turn it over. Bloomfield's fresh legs surges forwards. No scrum half currently though, someone's gonna have to play nine. Instead, forwards decide I'm not gonna play nine, I'm gonna carry it around the corner and wait till she's arrived. Cleal then. Plays a flat pass. It's eventually picked up by Rowan White. Good solid run forward there from Gallagher. Try scorer for Saracens at the end of that first half. And Poppy Cleal. Bryony on the field with her as well, of course. Bloomfield looks to go to the forwards once more. And that time it is Bryony who does the carrying. Sonia Green is there keeping up the chat. 
knowing that the referee is right next to her. Kick down into the corner, it's going to beat everybody into touch, and that is brilliant work. Very nice bounce there, like, uh, from a Saracen's point of view. I think there, though, what Gloucester have started to do now is they're icing the breakdowns. So they're leaving the breakdown. They're not competing, so they've got more people on their feet. However, when a Saracen's running player is running on their own from out to in, then that's when you really need to try and go for a jackal there because they're isolated just for kind of even just half a second, but you could just get your hand on the ball. You either then get a turnover or you slow their ball down at least, so then you can get yourself organised. Close to Hartbury, win the ball from the line out. Nicely done. Bradley takes it down. Gallagher tries to put some pressure through the breakdown. Box kickers well, only earned them three or four metres, really, from Blackburn. Blackburn is getting a fair old talking to from Kerry Large after that kick. I'm not sure Large felt that was the right option. I think it was just a bit rushed. It didn't really need it to, you know, you could play a few more phases there. I don't know whether she maybe got a bit panicked that they were getting towards the 22, but even if you carry it outside the 22, you could always then just change your mind and keep it, kick it open and then have a big chase, like a wiper kick. Through the hands again comes Saracens. Trying to find the player at pace. It was Wardle who was arriving. Defence held up to it. Harrison again looks for the long pass on the outside. Rowan White. Well tackled by Hurd. Now they pop it up again. Running onto it is Fadrigi. Takes two to bring him down. Abba Burton, one of those, making the tackle. Well, was that a tackle on the player without the ball? It was. Saracens tap and go quickly. Where's the option? Was that not forward in the tackle? Now it's come forward off Saracens as well. In fact, the referee has just said that is all the advantage and Gloucester Hartbury still have it. Large. Are they going to try and run this? Stepping in away from the touchline. Marianne Gitting sets it up. Blackburn is under plenty of pressure. Blackburn fends away. Just getting riled up there. Definitely. You want, you want to protect your nine in that. You don't want people flying off their feet, coming in and, uh, and letting them get access to the ball there. Boston Harpery scrum. Abby Burton breaks. Gets it away to Blackburn. Still under so much pressure from that advancing Saracens defence. Harrison's now have it, looking dangerous again. A little shorter ball. Zoe Harrison. It's there again for Bloomfield. Poppy Cleal popping it up for a sister. Bryony and then Lottie Clapp, well tackled. There it is again for Jerry Thomas. She's made a few valuable yards up front since she's come on. But then it's loose and it's gone forwards and the advantage is being played to Gloucester Hartbury. And we'll have the scrum. So, Cat Merchant, there's uh, been a decent fist of it from Saracens. Who stood out for you? Who would be your player of the match for this one? Tough one, because really they have all stepped up and they really have performed. But I think there's one player for me that just has stood out and like done some really big carries. She's also worked on her passing game as well, been putting in some big hits, and that's uh, Poppy Gill at number eight. I think she's had a fantastic game, uh, uh, yeah, and um, just really made her impact from the first minute to now on the 76th. Kick downfield is to Rowan White. Looking to find an opportunity on this right-hand side. That ball has gone forwards. And the referee is there to give it. Georgie Lingham 
dreaming of scoring. She's not going to get through on that occasion. I'm not quite sure what the what the uh, what the boos are all about. It was definitely forward, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't one of those ooh lateral or forward. That just a forward pass. So Poppy Cleal, the uh, Tyrrells Premier 15s player of the match. Got herself on the score sheet, and uh, yeah, fair amount forward from Cara Wardle. Cara Wardle's um, had a good game though, hasn't she? She actually, she's turned up a lot and she's, uh, yeah, a very good player. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Abby Burton, she played well as well, to be fair, in a game where Poppy Cleal has dominated so well. Her opposite eight has uh, not acquitted herself badly at all. Abby Burton is just 17 years of age, so... Uh, Real one worth watching, giving away eight years to uh, to Poppy Cleal. So take that experience. She's a converted centre. Just lost to Hartbury, come forward again. It'd be great to see the home side build towards another score. But they're constantly having to do it from inside their own 22. Saracen's defence has been good. Two strongest defences in the league on show this afternoon. Saracens have only conceded five tries now with the one from today over the course of the season. Gloucester Hartley going into, the, into this one had only conceded eight. Saracens have put another five onto that for them, but uh, they get themselves a penalty as we slowly tick down towards full time. Yeah, Gloucester are really trying to play and like you said, but when you're doing it from your 22, it is really difficult. Uh, I think they also just need to go, uh, they don't need to go quite as wide so early, but their first initial hit in should be one channel wider. Kerry's linking up with the fullback and it's just too tight. They're defending it very well. Go one channel wider uh, around that, targeting the 13, and that's just a better channel to kind of hit because it's harder to defend there. And then quick ball would be the key from there, wouldn't it? Yeah, and then off that. Well, Saracens have opted to add another three points to the tally here. And Zoe Harrison strikes it, and the flags are raised, and the referee says that will be that. I reckon Zoe picked that one just so she could uh, rack up her points a little bit more. Just have the last word, having come on for the second half. Well, it's been a strong performance from Saracens, largely dominant, but... Uh, the scoreline perhaps not reflecting a lot of the good work that Gloucester Hartbury have done throughout the match. But, well, as you see, Poppy Cleal just come across the front of the picture there. It's five tries scored by the visitors. They will take all five points from this one. Gloucester Hartbury will come away with nothing. But, well, as Susie Appleby said at the very start of the day, it's about the experience that a lot of her young players are getting up front. And, uh, well, they will have learned a lot from that front Saracens 8. It's finished full time at Hartbury College. It's Gloucester Hartbury 7, Saracens women 33. So four tries scored in the first half, two in the second, and we can have a look at those scores now. This was Saracens coming forward, and uh, well, eventually you'll see that it is our player of the match, Poppy Cleal, who pops up on the end of it. Yeah, just working hard in there, and then they're all doing their little picks, getting in, and then you've just got to stay nice and low to the ground. Here she is, she's eyed it up, when, and when she's that close to the line, just no one is going to stop her. She'll power away over, and that is more difficult than it looks, because you have to really burrow, get low, because if anyone gets underneath you, obviously it's held up. So uh, great work to get round on the outside, driving, getting her body weight behind it, and burrowing down low. That was the fourth try to earn themselves the bonus point. And Zoe Harrison on for the second half, able to slot the two-pointer. And then they managed to find a little bit more space out in the wide channels, having shown that they could do the up-front stuff. And Garnet McKinder got in for her second try of the day. 
a really good play again execution running at pace and just simple that's all it was simple hands actually there like i say simple i know it's hard work but just fix fix move it across great work and like you said mix of backs and forwards didn't matter what number shirt they've got on they could get that ball wide So it's been a big week for England as well, of course, as uh, we uh, round up our action here in round six of the Tyrrells Premier 15s. Of course, Simon Middleton naming his EPS for the Autumn Internationals. England taking on Canada in that three-match series, the first of which you can see streaming live on englandrugby.com and on the Facebook page as well. And, uh, well, it was a good chance to catch up with Captain Sarah Hunter about how she's feeling ahead of those key three matches. A couple of years ago, I was at the, the school games, and uh, Ellie Kildurn was probably 16 to 17 year old back then, and um, I was a remarkably impressed with her back then. I thought she would probably play in an England shirt then, and I think she's done fantastically well. Like the the way she plays, so Emily Scarrett esque, um, is certainly someone I'll be looking at forward to just be involved in, playing alongside, and and seeing what she can do on the international stage. It's, it's a really exciting one to watch, I think. The, the schedule that we've got for the Old Mutual series, like Canada, one of the top four sides in, in the world, and sort of the arch rivals that we've played them on numerous occasions, we know it will be a, a hell of a hell of a challenge for us. But it's replicating the World Cup um, program that we're we're well used to, and actually, the more we can get get practice with that, the better um, it is for us, like in preparation for for World Cup in four years' time, especially the the new players coming through that may never experience it before and we've got three fantastic venues, Alliance Park, Stoop and obviously Twickenham and really excited just to get going with it. We're here of a remuneration structure, a match fee, a fee for EPS players, you'll still be needing to work but semi-professional in the 15s for want of a better phrase, that's that's still progress isn't it? Oh, absolute progress um, and it was always in the plans and obviously the, the the investment that RFU is putting in the women's game, like I say, for the Tyrrell Premier 15, now for, for us as elite players, and that a step and stone forward to where it can potentially go in a few years' time it is brilliant, and uh, it's, it's something that we've asked for, and, and they're sort of repaying with us, and it's a really positive step forward for women's rugby. the remuneration package and how that's going to work and, and what it means for these England 15s players but we can now speak to the winning coach of Saracens women Rob McCain is uh, sorry Rob Kane is hopefully able to join us Rob I hope you can hear me yeah uh, I can hear you loud and clear Nick good good many congratulations on the win how did you see it obviously Gloucester Hartbury put as much into it as they could but we spoke pretty much about that forward dominance and you really had a solid platform to build off there didn't you Oh, they, like they say, it takes two to tango and I thought Gloucester were outstanding today. We've just worked very hard on matching our accuracy with our tempo and I think we managed that today. Yeah, accuracy definitely was one thing uh, that you guys had over Gloucester Hartbury. What will be your focus now going into next week's game? Again, just keep on looking at our accuracy, looking at getting our balance right. Obviously, everyone knows we've got some big forward carriers trying to expose that 12-13 channel and, and keep on having fun. There's two or three teams at the top of the league, Rob, that have uh, obviously been doing well. That's uh, that's another loss chalked on to Gloucester Hartbury's record. Uh, you'll be taking on Bristol next week, so what will be the challenges uh, this week in terms of preparing for them? Same again. We'll look at the video, we'll celebrate tonight, and then work starts from Monday and we carry on another little step on our journey. Well, we wish you the very best. It was uh, a great result for you guys, and thanks very much for joining us. Thank you so much, Nick. So Rob Kane there giving us his thoughts, but uh, let's just revisit, of course, the three matches coming up for the Red Roses. England against Canada in three test matches over the course of a few days. It's Friday the 17th of November, Allianz Park, the first game, 7.30. And you can join us on the live stream for that one. Then match two, Tuesday the 21st of November, 7.45 kickoff at the Twickenham Stoop. That will be live on Sky Sports. And match three, Saturday the 25th of November. That one is after the England Samoa game at Twickenham Stadium. Another great chance for the Red Roses to play at Twickenham HQ. You can go to all of those games. Get to englandrugby.com forward slash tickets and buy yourself a ticket to get along and support the Red Roses. Those three games coming up in the old Mutual Wealth Series.
So we can now talk to our player of the match. He, uh, well, had a pretty storming game out there. Cat Merchant picking her out. Poppy Cleal, we can see your face on our monitor. Great to, uh, great to be seeing you. Uh, how was that from your point of view? A decent win for Saracens. It's a bit of a fortress for them. So to get the result and a bonus point was really good for us today. Yeah, there's a fair amount of forward dominance that we've we've been speaking about in terms of the commentary, and uh, and you were out there leading a fair bit of it. You, you didn't have Marley Packer on your shoulder today, but the rest of the seven did pretty well. Yeah, uh, we had Harriet at six, and I say she did outstanding today. Normally, I'm looking for Marley, but when I can see her, it's a really good outlet, and she's a good great carrier. Yeah, I said that you had a fantastic game today, Thank really you. good carrying, but you are a little cheat, aren't you? A little, <laughs> you a really little cheat. try and get away, yeah. yeah. I think I think Kat Merchant's trying to say that you're very good at getting away with the little bits and pieces that make you a top class player. Is that right, Kat? Is that, yeah, is that the point I don't always get it? away with it. I'm pretty sure the back row of Gosser knew what I was doing and they kept on hitting me pretty hard. There we go. Well, uh, listen, you've got a chance to uh, to build up now to a uh, to big game against Bristol, of course, your former club as well, where you spent a bit of time. How much are you looking forward to taking them on? Yeah, I'm going to relish all these opportunities against the top sides. Bristol are a top side. Now they've got Kim Oliver in charge. It's going to be a great battle and I'm just excited to get uh, out there against Bristol. And news, of course, this week of, uh, of the England EPS, a great chance to be taking Canada on over that triple series. So some work to do for club and then, uh, and then the country will come calling. Uh, hopefully. Right now I'm just concentrating on Saracens because we've got Bristol next week. If I can keep up my form, hopefully I'm knocking on that door and making a good impression on the uh, Tyrrells Prem. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, we really appreciate your time, Poppy. Well played today and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Poppy Cleal there joining us after a fantastic display for Saracens running out 33 points to seven winners against Gloucester Hartbury that our live game today and we've got plenty more coming up for you we've uh, got a game from the Green King IPA Championship next in a couple of weeks November the 12th we are down in Cornwall Cornish Pirates against Hartbury College and then the first of those women's internationals in the old mutual wealth series England women against Canada tickets on englandrugby.com forward slash tickets and then back into the Green King IPA Championship, Nottingham against Ealing Trailfinders, and then Bedford against Hartbury College towards the end of November. And then the ace final and the Champions Trophy final, the future of rugby. Have a look at who is coming through from the next generation. Lead these streams, of course, live on facebook.com forward slash official England rugby. Apologies to any of you who have had a, a, a little uh, incident or two trying to get hold of the live stream today. We know that there have been a couple of technical gremlins and, uh, and the internet can uh, can sometimes let you down a little. And, uh, and here at Gloucester Harper, we had a couple of teething problems, but we hope that you've managed to enjoy our coverage. Uh, Kat, just to, uh, just to sort of conclude things on the England front, then really exciting time with those seven uncapped players that have been named in the EPS. Uh, the likes of Joe Brown, Katie Mattinson, Laggy Tuima, Abigail Dow, Jess Breach, Ellie Kildoon we've seen today and Zoe Harrison and then of course the more experienced names. Canada were a bit disappointing in November, uh, sorry, in the, in the Rugby World Cup. What are you expecting from these, these games this November? I think Canada will be very disappointed with their performance in the World Cup uh, through their pool stages and, and I think that uh, they'll, they'll have worked hard. Canada are a really hard working team. They look to fix their problems and they will be coming over as a grudge, grudge match uh, against England. So I think we'll see big things from them. Um, I'm hoping that they'll have a lot of line speeds because uh, that is something that works well for them and just uh, th to work on skill set because I just think something was missing in World Cup so hopefully they found that uh, from a game perspective obviously not from an English perspective but uh, to watch the game it, it would be good if they step up yes it certainly will well listen we really appreciate all your thoughts this afternoon thanks very much for joining us Kat and there it is the uh, the run of matches as we said those three games against Canada in the women's series for the old mutual wealth matches and tickets at englandrugby.com forward slash tickets thank you very much for joining us this afternoon Gloucester Hartbury have lost out to Saracens who continue their run at the top of the Tyrrells Premier 15s some big games in round seven get across to those if you can and join us next time on the live stream here on englandrugby.com on the Facebook page and wherever you've been tuning in for now from all of us it's a very good afternoon <laughs>